Good afternoon, beloved. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it, for the Lord is good. The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is kind. We thank and praise God for another Wednesday noonday worship, and uh, we thank and praise God for all of you all joining us on today. I hope and pray your day has already been blessed. I know it has because the Lord woke you up this morning and started you on a brand new day. And we're thankful to God for life, health, and strength and how God continues to bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you all for jumping on and joining us on today, Wednesday noonday service. Amen. 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 Good to see all of you. Uh, we're going to get started with an old favorite hymn of the church. Uh, I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. Hymn number 493, if you have a book. Amen. If you don't, just sing along with me. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I once was alone and idle. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven saying there is work to do. I took my master's hand and I joined the Christian band and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, my Lord. I promised him that I, hold on, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for oh, my Lord. Had to get a little water, amen. Oh, I left my friends and kindred down for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. In distant land I trod, crying, sinner, come to God. <clears throat> I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Last verse. Now when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit and he owned me as his child. All around the throne of grace, he appointed my soul a place. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, my Lord. <clears throat> Promise him that I, I will serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Last time. Oh, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Promise 
him that I owe. I promise him that I oh yes, I promise him that I oh yeah, I promise him that I oh I serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. Amen. That demon of cotton mouth tried to get me. Amen. But the devil is a liar. Amen. We're going to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. Amen. One of the great hymns of the church. Let us pray, beloved. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to just come before your presence. Thank you, God, for allowing us this opportunity to come together virtually just to lift up your holy and righteous name. Ask, Lord God, you bless all of those who have tuned in. Bless those, Lord God, who will watch this video later. Bless, Lord God, all of those who need encouragement and to be uplifted, God. And we pray that this service would serve to do that. And so, Lord God, we need your presence. We need you in the midst. We need you to move and abide with us, Lord God, as we begin to lift up your word and lift up song and scripture. Bless us now, God, as we go forth of this uh, time and place and space. And may someone's life be touched and blessed and made new, Lord God, just by what they've experienced here today. We love you, God, and we bless you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, and thank God. Amen. Amen. All right, I want you to get your Bibles out. Uh, we're going to be in the book of Romans today. I'm going to be a little teachy-preachy today. Uh, that's where the Lord has led, led me. So we're going to learn something, and we're going to preach a little something. Amen. Book of Romans chapter 7, Romans chapter 7, and I want to focus in on verses 18 through 25. Romans chapter 7, verses 18 through 25. And I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. Here's what the word of the Lord says. It says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do, I do not want uh, to do. It is no longer I who do it but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? I like verse 25, y'all. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law but in the sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. I can't wait to unpack that. Amen. Y'all put a pen right there. Romans chapter 7, verses 18 through 25. That's what we're going to be teaching and preaching on today. Well, beloved, I have just a few announcements I'd like to lift up before you uh, and ask that you to govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, the unofficial time of summer is upon us. Amen. Uh, this weekend uh, marks Memorial Day weekend. And at First Baptist Church uh, during Memorial Day weekend, we always remember those who have gone before us and who have provided us with the blanket of freedom 
that we enjoy in these United States of America. And so this coming Sunday, the fifth Sunday, uh, we're going to celebrate our fallen veterans, those who now sleep and have moved from being elders to ancestors. Uh, we ask uh, that you all pray for those and remember those uh, who have gone before us. And uh, please tune in this coming Sunday at 8 a.m. for a wonderful Memorial Day weekend service at First Baptist. Also, I'm excited. We are continuing in Bible study. Uh, Bible study will take place on tonight. Pastor's Bible study will begin at 7, and we are in the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, we are looking at chapter number four, uh, uh, 12, chapter 12. I won't get ahead of myself. Chapter 12 is where we are, and uh, so we're going to be unpacking some more dealing with spiritual gifts. Uh, please join us tonight, 7 o'clock via Zoom. Also, crew Bible study will take place this evening at 7 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. Ask that you would join uh, those who are adulting, those who are part of our young adult ministry of First Baptist. And then also we have Bible study for our youth beginning at 6 p.m. for our middle schoolers all the way through high school. And so please join Pastor Nick uh, for Bible study on tonight beginning at 6 p.m. sharp. Uh, we are thankful, thankful, thankful to God. Amen. Bible study is here. Also, just a reminder, and this is particularly for those who have already registered and who have already received their shots. The second shots will take place on next Wednesday, June 2nd at the church. Again, June 2nd at the church. I believe the time is going to be from 4 to 6 p.m. 4 to 6 p.m., June 2nd. For those who have gotten their first Moderna shots, you'll get your second shot at the church on this coming Wednesday. If you need more information, you can contact First Baptist at 301-725-2600, or you can email us at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at F-B-C-O-G dot org. Amen. I want you all to be safe. Uh, enjoy this time. Uh, CDC lets us know uh, that we're at 50% of adults who have been vaccinated. Uh, that's a wonderful thing. And so we're trying to get back to the way it was before. But how many know things have changed? And so it'll never be the same. Uh, but we grow from the experiences that we have. And so, uh, beloved, just be mindful of the announcements and uh, the events of interest uh, as we go forward. Look forward to seeing you all at Bible study tonight. This time, we're going to prepare for our sermonic selection. And I'm going to ask, amen, Reverend Jay, to come and bless us. Amen. Y'all give God some praise uh, for my wife. Amen, Reverend Jay, as she comes to minister. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before I sing this song, just want to say thank you to all of you for your many, 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 many cards, calls, emails um, in the loss of my brother. I do so appreciate your, um, your reaching out to me and praying along with me and my family uh, during our time of bereavement. Uh, the song I'm going to sing is the song um, my mother said to me that when my brother was in the hospital before he passed, he lifted up the song and um, my sister sang it at his funeral and I'm going to sing it here for you now. And it's one that you know. When peace like a river attendeth my way when so
It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ shed his own blood for my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank and praise God. It is well, it is well with our souls. I want you to turn back with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter number seven. Romans seven. And again, we are looking at verses 18 through uh, 25. Um, I'm going to read verses 24 and 25 and uh, ask that you keep your fingers on the previous verses that I just read. But for the sake of time and getting through the message, I'm going to just read verses 24 and 25, Romans chapter 7. It says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. Word of God, for the people of God, thanks be to God. Amen. Ask your summa posture prayer for the next few moments that are mine to share. I want to talk about spirit-filled grace. Spirit-filled grace. 
Lord, we thank you for this time, this space, this place, an opportunity to lift up your word before your people. I ask, Lord God, you would endow me with all that I might need to preach and teach with power and clarity in this place. Lord, we love you, adore you, and bless you, and we thank you for all those who will be blessed by the understanding, Lord, of your word and then the internalization of the word so that we not only be hearers of the word, but doers of your word as well. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Spirit-filled grace, spirit-filled grace. Beloved, I've learned this, that God blesses us and God keeps us by way of his grace. And he gives us on a daily basis a measure of grace that we don't even deserve. <laughs> we don't even deserve a lot of the blessings that the Lord gives us, but yet God bestows them upon us. And it's interesting, this Wednesday after Pentecost Sunday, uh, studying, and God led me to this text to talk about really the gift of the Holy Spirit and how God has blessed us by way of his spirit with what I call spirit-filled grace. Now, in the text that I just read, you never saw the word grace, but the grace of God is all throughout this text. In fact, some people feel as if they are entitled to God's grace. But the reality is, beloved, we have to make sure we understand and know that grace is a measure of God's goodness that is extended to us that we can't earn, <laughs> we can't heap points for, or we can't get in God's good graces in order to have. No, it's just something that God gives on the just as well as the unjust. In fact, beloved, at the time of our text, the Apostle Paul was writing to the people at Rome because they felt as if as long as they kept the commandments that they were then in right relationship with God. And on the surface, that would seem right. It would seem right that as long as I do the word, read the word, go to church, amen, pray, that I'm in right relationship with God. But the reality is there is something within us that is at war with us. Uh, there's a war going on. Paul says, if I could keep all of the laws, then the reality is we would not need Jesus. If we could really do everything we say we want to do, <laughs> then, then we would not need God to help or assist us. But Jesus keeps us because from time to time, I don't care how perfect you feel you are, we are all law breakers. In fact, you can put that in the chat. I'm a law breaker. Every one of us has broken at least one law, if not more. All of us are law breakers, which means if we break one law, then there is the possibility that we can break all the laws. But the reality is, even though we're lawbreakers, God provides a measure of grace for his children, spirit-filled grace that covers us and keeps us despite our law-breaking habits. And I know as early in the sermon, early in this teaching, but somebody ought to give God praise for the fact that I'm not perfect, but I serve a perfect God. I, I don't have it all together. I have missteps and make mistakes and do all kinds of things that cause me misery. But the reality is God still provides me on a daily basis, basis the miracle of his love and affection for his children. All of us are lawbreakers. You see, beloved, there's an illustration I want to give. If there was a man hanging off a cliff and he's holding on just by the chain that he was holding on to, if one link breaks from the chain, 
I don't care if it's at the top. I don't care if it's at the bottom. If one link breaks, then the man falls from the cliff and plummets to his death. The reality is in this, beloved, one law being broken, one command being broken means that we have the possibility of breaking them all. If one chain link breaks and we fall, the grace of God is what holds us and keeps us. And beloved, when you get time to study this text, please do some in-depth study. Read chapter six along with chapter seven and chapter eight. Six, seven, and eight will make sense because in chapter six, the apostle Paul told us in chapter six, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the grace gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life comes by way of the gift of grace that God presents us. Even when we were supposed to meet certain death because of our law-breaking habits and because of sin, it is there that spirit-filled grace comes in and meets us where we need it the most. Now, what Paul does in chapter 7 is he lifts up the reality of what I call a duality in the body of the belief. We have a dual nature at work in the reality of the believer. And so this dichotomy that works within us it is the cause for Paul to say that, that I, 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 the, the good I want to do, I don't do. But the evil that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. There is a civil war or a tug of war working on the inside of you and me. And the key is that this comes from the inside. Even though Paul knew Christ, and even though Paul understood what it meant to be saved, the reality is that our sin nature is still active within us. See, when God saved us, God did not take out our sin nature. In fact, beloved, we have at work within us the prosperity and power of God, while at the same time we've got at work within us uh, the, the, the flesh, the flesh at work and at war with what that which is spiritual. But the Holy Spirit, moves in us, watch it, to empower us and equip us and enable us so that yet at the same time, God help me, that my sin nature is active in my body, yet at the same time because of the Holy Spirit I'm talking about spirit-filled grace, y'all. The Holy Spirit moving on the inside of us. There then is a spiritual nature that is at work on the inside of us as well. So at the same time that I have a nature of sin in operation, where there is a wrestling match going on, at the same time that I have a sin nature in operation, I've also got the spiritual operation and nature of God existing in my life. Bible tells us that I want to do good, but evil is present. And what you must understand, beloved, is that there were some 600 commandments by now that had been written for people to follow. And the reality is no one could follow all of those commandments. In fact, it became so bad that priests would start lording the fact that people were lawbreakers. And because they were breaking the law, uh, there was then punishment for them. And so they dealt a lot with legalism. Legalism. Legalism is where you try to put people on the path to following so many commandments. And so it starts with the Decalogue in the book of Exodus, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments become expanded and the expanse of the commandments go all over the place. Over 600 commandments to follow. But nobody could keep up with the 600. 
And so legalism began to take place. But what I love about God is that, that when we legally or to have legalism at play within us while we're warring against our sin nature, God puts in us a spiritual nature of grace that helps us that as lawbreakers, where people will point out the legalism and laws that we're breaking, God puts forth what I call gracism. Grace abounds. How do you know that this takes place, Pastor Jones? I know that grace yet abounds in all of us because the reality is, beloved, there's a struggle on the inside of us. And because there is a struggle, the struggle is a sign that you're saved. The struggle is the sign that you're saved and the struggle is a sign uh, that you have a change that has been brought about in your life. Because before when you would sin, you wouldn't think twice about what you would do. Before when you would say you would not bring it to the altar of God and would ask God's forgiveness. Before when you would do something, you wouldn't think anything of it. But because now your grace, the grace of God is active in your life and the spirit nature of God is in operation and at war with the sin nature that is in your life. Then because of the struggle, then there's evidence of salvation. And where there's evidence of salvation, there's evidence of change. See, beloved, because of grace, grace now helps me look to God when I get ready to make mistakes. Grace helps me to turn to God when I have these internal struggles within me. And the reality is, beloved, that the reality is in, in, in Romans chapter 6, it says that the sin leads to death. But the gift of God is eternal life. All sins have to be paid for. But the reality is God then helps us as sin has been paid for due to his debt of dying on the cross. His debt of dying on the cross. So that therefore, beloved, when we struggle with what is on the inside of us because sin nature has not been taken out of us. God then allows his spirit to manifest in our lives so that a change can take place. See, we are the combination of dirt and divinity. Dirt and divinity. What does that mean? Dirt and divinity means that on one side I can be heavenly, while on the other side I can be so earthly. On one side there is the righteousness of God. And on the other side, there's the wretchedness of the world. On one side, I, I, I'm, I'm Psalm 8. I, I'm a little lower than the angels. But on another side, even though I've got angelic tendencies, angelic tendencies, the reality is I'm stuck on the ground. I'm stuck in the middle. I've got an angelic call to perfection, but I still have a low down call to, to, to live a certain way. There's a struggle within me, but thanks be to God that God gives us a spiritual nature by way of grace to help us through this. Paul says, the, the good I would do, I do not do. And the thing that I hate, that's what I find myself doing. And so Paul wants us in Romans 7, he wants us to know that, that he has stopped trying to be good in order to fool other people. He stopped trying to just put on airs and front in front of folks about where he is as it relates to the sin nature and the spiritual nature and the struggle within. And, and, and really, re beloved, what I want you to help understand and realize is that once we realize that there's a wage of war going on, you and I have to be real about where we are. Walter Wink says this, uh, that Paul wants us to know that we had to stop trying to be good that leads us to being fake 
and that we ought to learn to be real with God. We ought to be real with God. It's not about putting on airs. It's not about fronting in front of folks. It's not about putting on what you think other people want to see. The reality is it's about being real about where you are in your walk with God. It's about being real about the struggles that you have and the tendencies that go on with the sin nature side of yourself and, and the help that we need through God's grace through the spiritual nature that God has given us. So the question becomes, how do I win the struggle, Pastor Jones? How do I win this tug of war that is so active in my life? You got to be real with yourself. You must, if you're going to be real with yourself, then you must learn to die to self in order to live in the Lord. I'm going to say that again. You must learn to die to self in order to live in the Lord. So even though my sinful nature is active, I must take onus within myself under the auspices of God's spiritual nature to take time to die to self that I might live in Christ. I've got to learn to deny and I've got to learn to starve. I've got to learn not to acknowledge my sinful nature. And when you do that, you will disrupt it through your denial and cause a death on a daily basis to take place with your sinful nature. Now, now just because you denied yourself once does not mean that is over. Just because you had the strength today to battle back the sin nature that is active in your life doesn't mean that it's over. This is a daily battle. Please hear me. It's a daily battle. And that's why we need the attention of God's grace on a daily basis in order to help us to combat the sinful nature that is active within all of us. So because you won the battle today, you got to keep waging the war. You got to keep on, on a daily basis, stay on your grind with God in mind. Ooh, stay on your grind with God in mind. You got to keep God first. That is a daily process. And the reason why we must deny or crucify ourselves on a daily basis is because the first thing in the morning that our sinful nature does is wakes us up even before we pray. Our sinful nature wakes us up and asks certain questions. If y'all gonna be real and shame the devil, you're gonna admit to this, amen. Here's what sin nature will ask. What are we doing today? <laughs> in fact, in fact, what your sin nature will do in the morning is say, what we going to do tonight? What we going to do tonight? Where are we going today? <laughs> what we going to do? Who we meeting up with today? Dr. A. Lewis Patterson, the late Dr. A. Lewis Patterson used to say, that's why crucifixion becomes so important in order, uh, because in order to have a crucifixion, you can't crucify yourself. In other words, you need help to crucify your sin nature. And Jesus Christ, by way of his Holy Spirit, is the help that we need. He becomes the hammer and the nails to crucify on a daily basis the sin nature that tends to rise up within us. That's why, beloved, just look at yourself and say, I need Jesus on a daily basis. You need Jesus on a daily basis because not only is it important to be real with yourself, not only is it important to crucify your sins on a daily basis, but you must also die to legalism. In chapter 7, it says, because it's the law, it's the law that lets you know that you have sinned. Now, the law is good for detecting and revealing what sin you have transgressed. But the law has no power to set you free from the sin that you have committed. So you, you can't keep up, first of all, with all that 
the, the sin that you do and the laws that you break. But the law is only designed to, to let you know what you did wrong. So in John's gospel, Jesus gave an 11th commandment, which is really another commandment. He says, uh, another commandment I give unto you that you must love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you love me, then you won't steal. If you love me, then you won't kill. If you love me, then you won't lie, you won't covet, you will not dismiss your father or your mother. Jesus sa says these rules are, 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 are important. Why? Because when Jesus shows us another commandment, he's basing it off of the realization that when we're real with where we are, and we realize the laws that we've broken. It's because there is then the necessity to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jesus says these rules have been broken and these rules can uh, be mended in a way when you have a relationship with God. See, when you've got a love relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then he will help you in the time when you have been a lawbreaker, breaking these rules, and you realize you have broken the rules, but when you have a relationship with God, then God will help you to allow your spirit nature to rise up against your sin nature to be able to combat what you're enduring and what you're going through but you got to have a relationship with the Lord. See, Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 3 says this, You do not know, brothers, but I am speaking to men who know the law, that the law has authority over men only as long as he lives. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if the husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. So then, if she marries another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress because if the husband dies, she is released from that law and is not an adulterer even though she marries another man. Paul gives this example as it relates to husbands and wives, but this is also akin to the necessity of understanding the relationship we need to have with the Lord Jesus Christ relationships can, can free us and give us what we need in order to withstand the weight of sin. And God wants us to know this, beloved, that, that when I die to my sins on a daily basis and nail those sins on a daily basis to the cross, then the spirit nature within me tends to rise to a level where I am able to handle whatever comes up in my life. That's spirit-filled grace. Now watch this. Not only must some stuff die, but you must also, beloved, learn how to live. How to live. Watch this. Verse 24 says, who can rescue me from this death? Who, who can help me to handle all that I'm going through? The Bible says, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In 1 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, If anyone be in Christ, they are a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things come new. And see, this is the process that lives within us I got to be teaching here uh, through the process of sanctification. See, salvation is what is instant, but sanctification is the process toward the progress of being in the Lord. And so, beloved, the moment you are saved, you're on the position and on the path to getting closer and closer to the Lord. But then the process of sanctification is the daily grind of what we must do on a daily basis, having the backdrop of salvation, but understanding I need to progress and I need the process of living my life in the Lord. See, how can Jesus be Lord of your life if Jesus is not Lord in your life? I just said something there. How can Jesus be Lord of your life 
and Jesus is not Lord in your life. That means not only must Jesus be present for salvation, but you also need him for sanctification to help you through the process of progression to live a certain way by way of God's spirit empowering you and equipping you to learn how to live through Jesus Christ as Lord. Now watch this. I love this because the end of chapter 7 puts us at a place where it says, so then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in the sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. But you can't stop there. Oh, I love this. Watch it. Romans 8, 1 says, therefore, God help me, there is now no condemnation to those who are what? In Christ Jesus. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. Don't miss your shout cue. That's that I would do, I do not do. And that that I hate, I do. Who shall rescue me or deliver me, the Bible says, from this body of death? We find out that it's Jesus Christ that has gifted us by way of his grace, spirit-filled grace, by Jesus Christ being Lord of my life. And Romans 8, 1 says, therefore, which connects me to the previous scripture, therefore there is no condemnation in me. Okay, let me see if I can help you see it through here and, I'm, and then I'm gone. So, 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 so I got to realize and take on the reality that I, that I got to realize that I've sinned. Once I've taken on the reality of my sin, then I need a relationship with the Lord. And in my relationship with the Lord, my spirit nature will rise up and even though I have tug of war on a daily basis, the spirit will overtake the flesh. The spirit will win out over the flesh. But you got to nail that sucker on a daily basis to the cross. I'm just teaching Bible today. And then always, beloved, when you start living in the Lord, the reality of your relationship will take you to another realm. It'll take you to another place in God wherein Sin no longer has a hold over your life. Okay, let me see if I can make it live here. Uh, there, there is in what is called uh, the legal system, uh, the American legal system, the law of double jeopardy. The law of double jeopardy. And, and, and uh, double jeopardy means I can't be tried twice. God help me. For the same crime, I can't be tried cried twice for a crime that I've already committed. In fact, if y'all remember, there was a movie back in the day called Double Jeopardy, where the woman tried, was tried for killing her husband. She was put in jail for a crime she did not commit. Uh, and then she gets out of jail after doing time in prison and, and later runs into her husband who has now got taken on a new alias and who has faked his death. And she says, I'm going to kill you. And, and she could do it. Why? Because uh, she's already been tried for the previous murder. Here's what I want y'all to see in this. In sin, you and I were found guilty. But then Jesus paid it all. God help me on the cross. That's why all to him we owe. Now, I, I can't be tried for what Jesus has already paid for as long as I live in Christ. Because Romans 8 and 1 says, therefore there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So you've got to live in Christ, but you also got to live in the spirit. See, uh, you got to find a place, beloved, that, that while Christ Jesus has paid for your sins, the reality is now that you're living in Christ, you've got to be active in the spirit. Uh, this last illustration, there was a man who had two dogs. Uh, one was good and one was mean. And, and, and asked, uh, one person asked, which one of the dogs is the strongest? And the man said, it's the one that I feed the most. Which dog, God help me, are you feeding the most? Are you feeding your sin nature or are you feeding your spiritual nature? The way you feed your spiritual nature is on a daily basis with the word of God. 
when you have a steady diet of the word of God and you feed your spirit over your sinful nature. Galatians 5, 16 through 24. I ain't got time to read it, but Galatians 5, 16 through 24 tells me uh, which nature is going to win out when I learn to feed the right nature. Because how? 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 Because you must feed your nature, your spiritual nature, in order to live a life that produces over your sin nature. I got to give you this and I'm gone. I, I know my time is up. Here it is. See, sin nature operates in confusion, but our spiritual nature operates in peace. So if I want more peace in my life, I've got to learn to feed my spiritual nature more than my sin nature. Sin nature operates in meanness. Ugh. Amen. But a spiritual nature operates in kindness. And so if I want kindness to be projected in my life, then I've got to continue to feed my spiritual nature. Uh, sin nature makes people act crazy. Craziness crazy foolishness all around, but my spirit nature helps me to live according to goodness. And so if I want goodness to abound in my life, I've got to make sure that I feed my spiritual nature. Sin nature operates in despondency and disappointment. Faith, spiritual nature operates in faith. Sin nature operates in an out of control manner, just no self-control. But then spirit Spiritual nature helps me to remain calm, cool, and collected, and when I want to erupt, a, and self-control abounds. See, don't satisfy the lust of the flesh, but learn to feed your spirit. And when you learn to feed your spirit, that is what will carry you, and that is what will keep you, and that is what will hold you in time of need. And thanks be to God. For the spirit-filled nature of God's grace that yet abounds in my life. When I should have been a wretch undone. When I should have died in accordance to my sin. I have a God that loves me so that even though two natures are at war within me on a daily basis. Every day I wake up. Guess what meets me? Grace and mercy meets me. Grace gives me what I don't deserve. And mercy holds holds back what I do deserve. Aren't you glad that God gives us spirit-filled grace to allow his spiritual nature to rise in our lives so that when we're at war with the sinful nature in our lives, God has given us the ability and equipped us and enabled us and empowered us to be able to fight Whatever has come against us. See, God's grace, hallelujah, is what started it all. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. Grace will open doors. Grace will meet needs. Grace will make ways. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so guess what he looked beyond God help me all of my faults and saw my need thank God for grace thank God for grace thank God let your spirit nature live feed your spirit nature and it will combat, it will crucify, it will deny, it will kill the sinful nature that is at war within us on a daily basis. And listen, y'all, listen, I'm done. I know I'm, I, I'm, I'm way over time, but listen, I got to give you this. I, I think it's interesting how the Bible is canonized. This is the last thing I'm going to say. It's interesting how the Bible is canonized because right before Romans is Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. And in the first two chapters of the book of Acts, Jesus Christ tells us that, that, that we're going to go into Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world and be witnesses for him. But he says, tarry, wait on the spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, we've got the introduction of the spirit. And then all throughout the book of Luke Acts, we see the Acts of the Apostles. 
and we're introduced to Paul and Silas. We're introduced to Peter and John, all of these great people. When we, by the time we get to the book of Romans, which is the very next book after the book of Luke Acts, it is here that it helps us to understand that, that, that sin nature still lives within us, but the same spirit, God help me, that came alive at the day of Pentecost is the same spirit that is at work within us when we live in accordance to Jesus Christ, when we live in Christ, when we allow the spirit nature within us to live and we feed that nature on a daily basis. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory, y'all, that God keeps us in times like these. There is therefore no condemnation <laughs> to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the law of the spirit of life set me free. Hallelujah. From the law of sin and death. That's Romans 8 verse 2. Y'all be blessed. Listen, let your spirit nature live and it will conquer your sin nature in Jesus name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now to the conclusion of this message, this teaching. I pray, Lord God, that the people would got the word and, and have an understanding, Lord God, so much so that the spirit is active within us, Lord God, that the measure of grace that you give us on a daily basis is enough grace to combat the sin nature that would try to rise within us to combat us and bring us down. And Lord, I don't know why you left the sin nature within us, but I do know this, you've given us everything we need to conquer it. You've given us everything, you've equipped us, you've empowered us, Lord God. You, you've endowed us and enabled us with everything we need, Lord God, to live according to your word, to live in Christ. To be in Christ, Lord God, is the greatest place we could ever be in. So bless us now and keep us. Allow us to take this word with us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God for spirit-filled grace. All right, I got to go. See you tonight at 7. Amen.